Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick follow up on the video that I just did yesterday on how do I sit with the bad feelings. And this is just a reading of the blog post that I wrote a couple weeks ago called The Quest to Feel Better. And I thought I would go ahead and read it on here, it's short, so that you could get sort of a play-by-play, -play, like behind the scenes look on how I personally uh, sat with some really rough feelings a couple of a couple of weeks ago. So I'm just going to read this short uh, blog post called The Quest to Feel Better, and then I'm going to put a link in the show notes if you'd like to read it yourself. So here it is, The Quest to Feel Better. Uh, I start with two quotes, one from Jeff Foster. Feelings don't want to be healed, they want to be held. And then one from my favorite, Ted Lasso. Be curious, not judgmental. So here it is. Last Thursday, a strong, somewhat nondescript feeling of ick pervaded my body. The feeling arose after receiving a comment that wasn't overly offensive, but was nonetheless taken as a hit to this well-formed ego of mine. The ick was sort of a swirling, prickly mixture of sadness, disappointment, and unworthiness. Yuck. Almost immediately, my mind, my ego, rushed to my defense with a long list of evidence that I am indeed not a disappointment, not lack, I mean, and I'm not lacking in worth. My efficient little ego presented a compelling slate of examples of times when I have excelled, exceeded expectations, and overcome daunting obstacles with resounding success. Sounds like an ego, doesn't it? Yep, that adorable narrator in my head reassured me, you are indeed amazing. Push those irritating feelings aside and return to the good stuff. But then, out of nowhere, there was a complete abandoning of this desire to escape the ick. I suddenly stopped wanting to push it aside to get to the good stuff. I knew, of course, that the stories of unworthiness and disappointment were lies. That much was obvious. But in that moment, I sensed that the icky feelings and sensations in my body were there to be honored, to be held, to be felt. The feelings weren't personal and were not even caused by the hurtful comment. Read that again with curiosity, not judgment. So I'll read it to you again. The feelings weren't personal and were not even caused by that initial hurtful comment. The comment was simply the most efficient way for those feelings to finally make it into my conscious awareness. The comment was the perfect vehicle for bringing the feelings to the sunlight to be seen and felt. The feelings and sensations did not want to be dismissed or pushed away to make room for better or more palatable feelings. Jeff Foster describes these types of feelings as unwanted children who have come to our door. They are asking to be loved and held exactly as they are. They've been waiting for years, decades, or even generations for someone to be courageous enough to welcome them in with open arms. The quest to feel better is one of the mind's oldest and trickiest little tricks. The mind is so skilled at establishing benchmarks for what better means. And usually it places all discomfort and icky feelings in the bucket of not better yet. So we stay stuck, trying in vain to find ways to make the unwanted feelings and experiences go away. The more force and determination we use to hold back the unwanted feelings, the harder they work to make their way in. So we find ourselves armoring, building protective layers so that sadness, fear, disappointment, and humiliation have no chance of getting in. But in doing so, our minds keep us in a state of vigilance and stress. After all, if those feelings are not allowed in, then our mind must be ever vigilant about keeping them out. But what if, and this is my heart's favorite question, what if those feelings of sadness, fear, hopelessness, and all the other ones we've been taught to hold at bay are actually invitations? 
What if they've been part of our pre-conscious and subconscious programming for decades and are simply showing up now because we are ready and equipped to see them, hold them, honor them for what they truly are? What if, again, my favorite question, what if instead of pressing down or pushing away these unwanted children, as Jeff Foster calls them, in search of better ones, what if we invite them in? We offer them our con unconditional love and presence. Imagine the peace and incredible freedom of having an open heart that no longer has to build fortresses to protect itself from something that is innately safe. And yes, all feelings are inherently safe. It is our resistance to them and our misunderstanding of them that can lead us into suffering. Imagine the falling away of all that mental exhaustion when we stop striving so hard to figure out the cause and effect stories of situations and feelings. What if when you have an icky feeling, you don't go into your intellect to search for the cause in hopes of fixing it? What if a feeling and the accompanying sensations can simply move through you without needing to have meaning attached to it? What if the icky feelings and sensations in the body are not evidence of something going wrong, but instead they are evidence of, the, of healing an old worn out belief? Imagine how much simpler it would be to have an open heart if you knew that those feelings and sensations were actually in service of you. What if they are the very mechanism for healing of those old worn out beliefs, such as I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not safe. What if you don't ever need to waste time or energy trying to figure out how to have more of some feelings and less of others? After all, none of them are personal. They aren't about you, your ego, your intellect, that little narrator in your head. They are about a lifetime of old, worn out beliefs and programming. All of it that's meant to be seen and dissolved. Last Thursday, I saw much more clearly that I am the space of peace and unconditional love through which every single feeling and human experience is allowed to pass. Naturally, my normal, healthy human mind will continue to pair feelings with circumstances, insisting that outside circumstances are causing my suffering. And it will continue to provide all kinds of evidence and drama. But I'm on to that adorable, protective little liar in my head. It's so cute in its attempts to secure its story of me. When I can fall out of my head and into my heart, I am able to welcome all feelings. I am able to see very clearly that discomfort is not a signal to escape. It is an invitation to be still, to trust, and to be curious. The icky feelings that my mind once interpreted as evidence of unworthiness are now seen as evidence for healing already in progress. All I need to do is open the door and say, hello, come on in. I hope this has been a little bit helpful. Again, always feel free to reach out to me either via email or through my website. And I'll put the, um, the link in the show notes below. And if you haven't had a chance yet, just click that subscribe button real quick so that you will be alerted when there are future videos. I look forward to hearing from you. Even if you just wanna reach out with a quick question or a hello, I invite you to do so. I would love to hear from you. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.